In this video, I continue expanding the camera tracking topic and expand on this to include camera face tracking, where the camera direction will follow another object, which is handy if you have a stationary camera in the scene and moving objects you want to track in your camera shot. I'll also use an attribute wrangle to lock the camera tracking onto one axis, so it only follows a particular axis. What would this look like? For example, this rolling cube scene, you can just follow the cube on the side without copying the bouncing movements of the camera and simply just lock onto the X axis. I'm going to lock the camera onto a specific axis of the rolling cube to create a sort of shaking or earthquake camera effect. This is to illustrate how you can use this dynamic camera tracking technique if you only want say if you only want to copy the y axis movement of the rolling cube but you don't want the camera to follow the x or z axis what would this look like it would look like the camera was bouncing up and down sort of like a earthquake effect or a shaking camera effect we can write an attribute wrangle here and i'm gonna say at p equals so basically this let me do it properly v now, I haven't gone over Vex on this channel at all, so I'm just going to keep this super brief. What this is just saying, V at P. You really don't need the V, but this is the more, more uh, the good practice way of doing it, declaring the variable ahead of time. You really don't need this. Not for this example. So I'm just going to get rid of it, but you should have it there. Just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to remove it. Now, P is the current P position of this point, and I'm setting it to a new vector, which I'm zeroing out the X and the Z. So I don't want the X and Z to move at all. I only want this destination geometry to move on the Y. So I'm canceling out the X and Z. So what does this result in? Well, we can just play it and see. You can see that the camera only moves up and down. Since we have the render flag on our destination geometry, we can see what the cube is doing too. After we applied um, this attribute wrangle that cancels out, that takes out the X and Z movements, it only applies, we're only keeping the Y movements, the Y axis movement. So if we play this, we can see that the cube just bounces up and down. And then our camera is bouncing up and down. So this might be a good way to control the camera motion if this is what you're aiming for. If you use Houdini's follow, follow path shelf tool, um, you can actually animate the path of the camera movement that you want to follow. But that requires a predefined animation and predefined path. This technique that I'm demonstrating in this video is a more procedural way of camera tracking. I set the camera to follow the cube, lock onto the Y axis, and even if I make changes to my simulation, which changes the rolling cube, this technique automatically updates the camera tracking. I don't have to reanimate and manually update each keyframe. There's no, there are no keyframes. I'm just gonna hide this attribute wrangle. It's only there for demonstration purposes. Now I'm gonna do um, look at. I'm gonna add another camera down. gonna hide this. I'm gonna only focus on the second camera. I'm gonna move this camera so that it's over here. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna have this second camera stay stationary at this position. And what I want to do is have the cube roll by and have the camera rotate from left to right looking at like staring at the cube. So it's sort of like the camera is set on a fixed position, but the camera is free to rotate left to right, sort of like turning your head from left to right to see something go by. There are hidden parameters in the camera node that are set to invisi invisible by default. And this was done starting Houdini 16, according to some Googling and a post I found on SideFX's forum page. I honestly never noticed this change back then because when I was still using it, I was still a super, super newbie at the time. You can set the camera directly to look at a particular object using this hidden parameter. 
So I'm going to select this camera over here, come to the wheel, edit parameter interface. Now, um, if you look here, you won't see it. You'll have to ch check this, show invisible parameters to, um, to look to see it. Now, there are three parameters here. You can actually enable these ones as well if you want. You can enable all of them. And then just hit in interface options, just uncheck this. Just gonna double check it's enabled for all of them. Okay, good. And then apply here and accept. If you look at the camera here, you'll now have a look at parameter. This is actually the only one we're going to be using. So let me just come back here and I'm going to disable the other ones. Look. So I'm going to make that invisible because this is the only one we're going to... Now, if I add this rolling cube, right, just left click this and drag it over to the look at drop it in here, you'll see that the camera immediately looks at the cube. And I'm just going to open up another one, camera two. So it's looking at the cube right now. However, if we start playing the animation, the camera doesn't uh, move with the cube. This rotation is stuck. This is only updated on the first frame. It doesn't update after that. Now, let me add another object. Here, I'm going to have a test object. I'm going to do the test shader ball object. I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to turn off the render flag off of the rolling cube. Now, we only see the shader ball. I'm going to keyframe this. I'm going to keyframe it here once on frame one. Drag this over. And on the 24th frame, I'm going to come over here simply because it's a lot easier and drag this on the X axis over here. And then you can see it's updated the translate here. So alt left click the translate and it'll turn green. And right here, it has a keyframe on frame 24, drag it over again, 48, drag this over here. Now you're going to alt left click translate here to add another keyframe. So now we have this shader ball moving from left to right. Now, select camera two. Now I'm gonna take this shader ball. I'm gonna drop it down on the look at. Now let's play it. The camera is actually following the shader ball. So let's go back again. So we act, we see the shader ball throughout the whole time camera two is staring at, uh, throughout the whole animation because the look at is actually updated. So this look at only updates if this shader ball, if our object that we're trying to track has keyframe animations or it has, it, it has a predefined path. Now this is not something that's, this is not very useful in our case because we're not trying to track the shader ball. Now I'm gonna um, remove the render flag here because this is gonna stay here for reference. So I'm going to make it black. So this was only there for demonstration purposes. Let me move this aside as well. Now the rolling cube, this doesn't help our case because our rolling cube, sorry, the, the camera is still tracking the shader ball. So let me remove this. So this doesn't help us because our rolling cube doesn't have a predefined animation. It's from a simulation, so it's not predefined. Now what we can do is uh, drop down and extract geo. Let's drop, drop down and extract transformation node. Let's drop this down. And again, for the source geometry, let's choose what we want to track. Let's go to our two track. That's the source here. Let's drop that down and then destination geometry. That's this one. So let's drop that down. Now for this extract, let's go to the camera two. Let's drop down this extract two at the look at and see what happens. So we now it updates. It updates the camera two, f camera two, and it looks at the cube. So let's start playing this. So this is perfect. 
This is what we want. Now the camera is looking at it and it's updating the rotation. Now, say we want the camera somewhere else. We don't want it at this position. Maybe we want to look at it f from the other side. So let's take this, oops. Let's take this camera and let's move it over here. Let's click the transform and let's just move it over. You can see how it still updates. It, we're still staring at the cube. It's still in the, in the camera view. I'm going to do this again, and I want you to, let me make this bigger. Now, no, um, take notice of where this camera is facing. As I move this over, the camera is still facing at the cube. So no matter where we're moving it, it's updating in real time. I hope you enjoyed this mini series of videos on camera tracking in Houdini. I find it super useful if you're doing a scene with a lot of moving objects, especially if the objects are driven by Houdini simulations. There are many ways to do camera tracking in Houdini. This is just one technique. I especially like the attribute wrangle added to lock onto a specific axis because you can expand on this and put noise onto the axis being tracked and create more interesting camera effects. I'm thinking of creating an earthquake scene. I think this would be super cool to have an earthquake scene with camera tracking tricks to enhance the effect. You can start to imagine the possibilities for using this technique in different scenes. For example, what if the cube was fractured instead of being a solid? The camera tracking would definitely come in handy to capture the entire destruction process. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.